So uh, yes, Mr. Dainty, uh, just now we visited the tigers mm -hmm. inside their enclosure wall. And then uh, we learned a lot, a lot about how tigers live and where they come from. So. But now it also it at Onko Aquarium and, uh, you know, uh, sorry, Onko Wildlife and Aquarium. We also have this uh, main tank, I suppose, you know, which handle a lot of species of fish. Yeah. And also some of them, they are very big, such as that yeah. one, sir. Yeah. So uh, again, sir, like how do you know that, okay, this tank should contain this type and amount of fish? Uh, what, how, do you, how do you come to this idea, sir? Yeah, so th this tank is what we call the Mekong tank. The Mekong so tank. So all of these species occur mm -hmm. here in Cambodia, in the Mekong River, Tonle Sap, Sikong, all, all the, the freshwater rivers in Cambodia. Yes, sir. So they are naturally found in the same water systems. Mm -hmm. So this is what, this is how we know these species, and we put together successfully. Yeah. Yes, so all oh, and also when we open, one of our main objectives is to teach people about the species in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. This is why we don't have species from outside of Cambodia in here. This is yes, all sir. about the Mekong river system. Yes, mm -hmm. from here, uh, you can see in the center, yes, sir. this is a giant Mekong catfish. Mm -hmm. um, ah, there's one coming here, you come around, sir. So that, that one, sir. Yeah. That one is the Mekong giant. Giant Mekong, Mekong cat catfish is, is this species, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have what we call the giant Pangasius. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's similar, gets a similar size, but look slightly different. So the one coming to us now with the big, the big fin, Yes, the dorsal fin on the back, ladies. Mm -hmm. This is giant Pangasius. Can get the same size like this one. Also very endangered. So these two um, are what we consider critically endangered, which yep. means we need to help them now or they will go extinct. Yeah. So um, in here, we have five critically endangered species mm -hmm. from the Mekong. So for example, that big one, so how yep. old is it, sir? Since, you know, it, the well, birth uh, it? We, we, we don't know because we get, um, mm -hmm. we get given these fish. Yes, sir. Um, from somebody to, to display in here. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not, so we're not sure like when it was born or whatever. Um, but at this size, we would guess around 15 to 20 years. 20 years? Yeah, yeah, old. Wow. They grow quite slow. So when oh. they get the, this one is around 80 kilo, maybe a little bit more. Whoa. So yeah, it takes take a long time. Yeah. Yes, sir. but how do you transport them, sir? Like, you know, fish are very hard. <laughs> you yes. know, you need like a specialized tank. Yeah, so, so. transporting fish is, is actually quite technical, yes. So yeah, we yes, need sir. to look after not just the fish, the water, stress level mm -hmm. always is a problem with any animal. What, what do you stress. mean by stress level? So stress. Like, they, they if get... they get very stressed, they get sick easy. So oh, we need to keep them yeah. as less stressed as possible, right? Yes, sir. Um, so for these, the big ones, so we actually bring up from a place near Phnom Penh. Mm -hmm. So these aren't from the river, we didn't catch them from the wild. Mm -hmm. they, they're given to us yes, um, by a, a fish collector. Yes, sir. Um, and we use the, the, water, the water tanks that you can buy, the 5,000 litre tank, big one. Mm -hmm. We put um, two on the back of the big truck. Yeah. And then we have a team of people that travel on the truck with the tanks, not inside, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with oxygen bottle. Mm -hmm. And there's some chemicals that we can use which keep the water clean and during the transport. So you don't see that there? No. No, no, no. We no, don't no. see that there. No, 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 no. They are all like aware yeah, of yeah, the surrounding yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there is a chemical we can use to put in the water for, mm -hmm. for some slight sedation, mm -hmm. but we only use that for a small amount of time. Mm -hmm. The problem on the truck from Phnom Penh here is around 10 hours. Yes. Sir. Because the truck can only go slow. Um, so we, we cannot sedate for 10 hours, it's dangerous. So no, they can, like, fully they can, they can over sedate oh, maybe oh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if we need to do something with one and we don't want to stress too much, yes, we can mm -hmm. sedate, but only a small time, not 10 hours. Yes, sir. So how do, how do you know that the fish stress out? Like, you know, I, I heard some documentary, they create like a, like some bubble some foam it around their body it, yeah it, it, so, some species yes it yeah, depends yeah. what species so mm -hmm. these big guys the main thing they do is uh, they they can uh, you know they hit they the side hit, of oh, the tank and okay. they can damage the nose and the mouth mm. and this, this sort of thing yeah so um uh, we need to prevent that of course so we, yes, we line the tank with protective thing but if they do that they don't hurt themselves too much mm -hmm. um, but yeah the main thing is just to keep the stress level as low as possible and to get them here as quick as possible mm, once yes, they're here we can settle them Yes, sir. Yeah. So in this tank alone, how many species do you contain inside the, in it, the premises? In this tank at the minute, around 15 species inside mm -hmm. uh, and five critical, critical five endangered. Critical. Yes, yes. So these are the main focus ones. So the, the big giant catfish, the giant barb is mm -hmm. uh, Cambodia's um, national fish, royal yes, fish species. Mm -hmm. um, 
also critically endangered. Mm. So yeah, I yes, sir. But you you are sure that they don't attack each other, even though they live in the same tank. Yeah. So we we know um, what species we can put inside and what species we can't, um, because we know how they interact and we know how they live. So, for instance, the the big the giant Mekong catfish. Yes, sir. It, this one feed on algae. Algae. It's vegetarian. So they are herbivore. Yeah. Not. Mm. So they don't eat the small fish. Yeah, yeah. If this uh, this size, if it was a carnivore, we couldn't mix with these small ones because they would eat them. <laughs> so it's about knowing what species to mix and um, I, and also how many. Yes, we sir. can't put too many in here, mm. right? Or else maybe we get some conflict or the water's too difficult to keep clean and healthy. So we have what we call a bio load. Bio load. Yeah, yeah. we know how many fish and and how big that we can keep in this tank. Yes, sir. So, for example, you know, because uh, when you put them in this kind of artificial environment, yeah, and you know, first of all, the thing that is very obvious is that the water is clear. clear. Water. The water yeah. is clear, and then you mentioned before that yeah. they might freak out a bit. Of course, because they see each other, that is why they freak out, sir. Well, when they come, yeah. so they came from a um, big pond mm -hmm. outside, and yeah. the water is not clear. So, sure, Berkeley, when yeah, they Berkeley. first come here. Yeah. So we didn't keep the water just clear like this when they first oh. come. Because they came way before we open. Yeah, yeah. So then we have a process to get them to get used to the, the water and used to seeing people and then they don't care. So yes, when we first put them inside here, the water's not so clear like this. And then yes, we sir. slowly get them used to it and graduate to this. Now they're used to it, they don't care. So they, they, they were in here around three months before we open. I see. And then we have a like a, um, a climatizing process uh, to get Climatization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, sir, like, uh, you know, when, for example, um, how did you keep the water as natural as possible? So because this is like a very closed loop system. It's closed so system, ev yeah. Everything have to be, you know, like maintained Clean, all the time. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. So how do you, let's say, for example, because fish, they also live in a, you know, a specific pressure of, you know, the river depth. Type of water, yeah. Yes, sir. And also the temperature, mm -hmm. the flow yeah. of water is also very important. Yeah. So do you get the flow of water like the river we have yeah. in nature? So we, so we, um, we have a lot of testing we do every day. Mm -hmm. And, and by, apart from it being clear, the main thing is we keep the water the same type as the clean uh, wild river system. Yeah? Clean wild water yeah, system. Yeah, the reason I say clean is because even in the wild now, the water is not so great. We pollute it a lot. We tip things inside the Mekong and, and all this. But we we know the different uh, parameter of water levels uh -huh. that is optimum. Mm -hmm. So in here, our team, we have eight aquarists working um, and their job every day is to test different water qualities. So mm -hmm. temperature for one, we needed we needed the right temperature around 27 degrees this one 27 degrees yeah. celsius sir. yeah yep. not not too much hotter than that mm. or they start to stress more yeah so we keep at the right temperature also we have a lot of things like the ph the mm. acidity level that we need to make sure is correct and, yes, and, and many other so every day well twice a day our aquarists um take water sample from all of the water system mm. and they test in a in a laser machine Oh, which give us the like the, the UV, yeah, not UV, but the, the laser, but, yeah. but give us the exact values. So we know if we need to add something or, or reduce something. So they do it twice a day. Yes, sir. How about the water pressure? Like you know, this tank I think is about like three, four meters. It's four meter deep. Four meters this tank. deep. Yeah. So these animals they are very comfortable living in this. Yeah. Pressure. So so this is fresh water. So mm -hmm. these are river system from Cambodia. So mm -hmm. that's not too important. Mm -hmm. I think different if you talk um, water pressure from marine fish mm -hmm. that can live very, very you deep. You mean in, at the sea? You mean at the sea, at yeah, the marine ocean, yeah. Uh, salt water, yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of these, you get very deep water. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot keep in four meter of water. So, so we don't. Uh, we only keep species that naturally in, in So this. if animals that usually live in the deeper water and then yeah. they are, you know, they are, let's say, kept in the big, you know, yeah. higher water. Yeah. Their body will like bloat, something like that. They they will expand. Uh, so so yeah. it it depends. So so yeah. very deep water species mm -hmm. generally aren't yeah. kept in in a, in in aquarium, aquarium. No, yeah. no, because we can't replicate the pressure and this. And even taking them from that pressure out, we already yeah, kill them. <laughs> so yes. you can't get them to the aquarium. <laughs> so we, we we don't keep deep deep sea water species now. Yes, sir. And also because. Uh, I came here like three times and I mm -hmm. often see scuba divers. Yep. 
the last time they put some food in the container yep. and then they squish the container and then it, it goes out for these ones yes yes sir so so what what i mean how 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 is the feeding process happen in this uh, so yeah. in this tank yeah um the reason our divers go inside to feed yes, not sir. just throw the food is yeah. we need to make sure everybody is eating the correct amount mm -hmm. and the correct type of food so i just mentioned the big one are uh, herbivorous they're vegetarian yep, yep. so we don't want them eating fish right mm. because it's not good for them so our divers as you mentioned have the bottle and they have a food mixture is, mm -hmm. is uh, vegetable various vegetables mixed into a paste mm -hmm. that that these fish will take from the bottle so we know they're getting the correct food if too too much protein if they eat too much fish it is it, bad for the internal so, organs. so normally yeah. if if we feed them enough they will eat the way they should eat yeah and if we don't feed them enough, they will turn to carny carnivorous uh, activity. Yeah, and sometimes they just do anyway. Right? Like, like we eat things yeah. we shouldn't. Right? Yeah. I, I eat way too much chocolate, maybe, or burger, or just something mm -hmm. we know is not too healthy. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm also the same if you, if you let them. So it's yeah. our responsibility to make sure they get the correct food, the food that's healthy for them. Yeah. Yes, sir. But you know, because um, I think you know, fish they are. My, my personal idea, maybe I'm wrong, sir. But fish, maybe they are, are less intelligent than tigers. Uh, for sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, like a, a yeah. more simple intelligence. <laughs> yes, they so, more instinctive. Yeah. So if they live in confined space like this, do they care about how big or small the, the space is? Sir? Uh, size, for sure, yes. If you keep a big fish in a small tank, it's mm -hmm. not happy. Mm. Right, so they need to. They still need to do the natural behaviors. So in the wild, yeah. they you know they swim a lot, they swim a and lot. they need to be able to do that here also. So yes, um, no, they're not as intelligent, yep. like, um, like cognitive mammal, in, yeah. in in intelligence. Yep. But that doesn't mean that they don't need to be looked after the same way. Right. So mm. we still provide. Uh, we even provide enrichment for our fish, same like the tiger. How how do you do the enrichment? So it depends on uh, on what we yep. do. So for for different methods of feeding, for instance, mm. right. So instead of just giving the food, we can put it inside things that they need to work at it to get it out just like they would in the wild. So these guys in the wild, they take algae from the rocks. That's why their mouth is this shape. Yes, sir. So instead of just giving them the food, we can do the same on the, on the rocks in it. It makes them do those natural behaviors. Mm -hmm. And this is all part of making them think and making them do natural behaviors. So all of this is uh, really crucial to, the, to their welfare. Yeah. So no, they're not as intelligent, but that doesn't mean they need less care. <laughs> yes, sir. But if you throw the food on top of the water surface, yeah. you mean the food will not flow down? No, no, no. Yeah. It, it will, but we can't yeah. control who eats what. Oh, so when, when, you, when you hold a canister, yeah. you actually like um, they feed, feed to they each feed individual. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. So like this, we know how, yeah. uh, how much everybody's eating. So mm. for the small fish, for the silver tin foil barb, yes, no, we, we scatter the food, they go to eat. No problem. Mm. But for the big guys that have specific diet, we make sure we feed the correct thing and the correct amount. Yeah. Yes, sir. But at the same time, you know, in the river, you know, the, the system is more complex. Yeah, sure. So you have like, you know, the you know specific sands and sediments yeah, yeah. or substrate that yeah. you mentioned. Yeah. So, in aquarium, in you know artificial environment like this, do you need to? You know, pay attention to the you know the substrate similar to the one in the rivers. Yeah, so um, yeah. It's slightly different here because, as you say, we have a closed system. Closed system we don't have yeah. an open river. Yeah. So there's in a river, there's always fresh water moving through, mm -hmm. right? And in general, unless we pollute it too much, yeah. that means fresh, clean water coming through, right? Mm -hmm. um, in here, it's a closed system, so we need to replicate that. Mm -hmm. We don't have fresh water going inside here all the time. Yes, sir. Um, and what we do there is our divers will come down and we do some vacuuming on the substrate. Mm -hmm. And that means that we take maybe water or bacteria that can get trapped inside the sand. Mm -hmm. uh, our guys actually remove that with the vacuum system. And how do you oxygenate the, the water? So, like so the oxygenation is, is mainly through the water movement. Oh. So when, when the water comes back into the system, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's oxygenated through its movement, right? So we have bubbles mm. in and, and that. So in smaller robot. tanks, you need to like push the bubble Sometimes, very recently. Yeah. yeah. So it also yeah. depends what species. So some species live in more higher oxygenated water. So yes, let's say a waterfall, right? When the water lands in the water, you get all the white bubbles. This is high oxygen water. And some species prefer that, some species not so much. In here, the, these guys are okay just from the water moving. So if you can see where the water comes back in from the system, yep. that movement on the surface is enough to keep oxygen level in this tank. 
but like I mentioned earlier about pH, temperature, and many other things, oxygen levels is something that the guys take every day as well to make sure. We're, if we need to add more, we can. We have oxygen tanks, so we can add more if we need to. But generally, this one, we don't need to. Yes, sir. But the thing that I see missing from the wild is that there's no crustacean, you mm -hmm. know, snails, crabs, or something like that. Yep. And I, I heard that, you know, the, the small crustacean animal, they, ha they also help clean the water. Clean them, yeah. Yes, sir. And also, there's no, like, aquatic plant floating on top. So why, why, why do you remove them, sir? I mean, they, they harm the tank in some way? So uh, we, we don't need the cleaner, like uh, the shrimp, the crab, this sort of thing. We, we have in some tank, like mm -hmm. uh, in the marine tank, the salt water, we, mm -hmm. we have the cleaner starfish, sea cucumber, um, and many other things that, that do those cleaning jobs. Yes. So we do have. In this tank, um, generally we don't need. And also if we put small crustacean here, they get eaten. These fish will eat them. Mm. So we, we can't have the small cleaner shrimp, you know, the, the tiger perch will come along and, <laughs> and eat them. So they, they wouldn't last long? No, not no. here, no. So this is one of our uh, aquarist divers, this is Sopan. And what he's doing, he's vacuuming. Vacuuming. Yes, so this, uh, attached to this, outside is a, a pump. Yes, sir. So we're pumping out the water mm -hmm. um, to the waste. So what he's doing is uh, under the substrate, this is where you get bacteria or maybe food, uh, leftover food can build up. And we want to take this away. So yeah, he's doing vacuuming to, to, to refresh the water in the substrate. But, but how about the filtration system, sir? They don't work under the, the sediment. That's, the, that's what you say. the filtration, yeah, it works, but it's, it's mostly from water overflowing. So we take water out the, I, a lot of like the protein and the, and the bad things from the food yes, float to the surface. So it is taken out by overflow and then into the cleaning system. But, but under but the sediment? The substrate, yes, yeah, can, can trap. So this is why we did the vacuum, just to make sure there's no bacteria growth in, in, in there. Yeah. Yes, sir. So do they, do, does he do it like every inches of the surface or only like a few they, selected spots? They do all, all, but they just do a little bit every day. <laughs> oh, so he, okay, okay. he's not doing this all day. <laughs> he has a lot more work to do as well. So they just cover mm -hmm. pieces every day. And then, so uh, maybe every part get cleaned once a week. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what are the bacteria? And, and if they overgrow, they will hurt the fish in one way, sir? Yeah, so it, it's just, uh, well, it's not just bacteria. Uh, uh, there's like uh, ammonia from, from the, from the, the waste. waste uh, and yeah. it, so all of this sort of thing can be, can be trapped by the substrate. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just pulling new water in and getting rid of the old. Uh, that's, that's all. I see, sir. Yeah, so it's just a Yes, sir. And at the same time, sir, how, how do you know that fish are sick? I mean, yes, sir, some of the way you can see their, their tails are, so are broken or something like that. Mostly yeah. it's through behavior. Through behavior. So I, I, our teams um, know the natural animal's behavior. So it's not just fish, the same like the tiger, the snakes. Mm -hmm. We know how they behave, right? <laughs> we know how they swim. <laughs> uh, we know how they feed. Mm -hmm. And so if you see that they're not doing that, normally, naturally, mm -hmm. then we know maybe there's a problem. So, 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 how, so how unnatural it is unnatural, so let's say? So, uh, for, with fish, the easiest yeah. way is, is swimming, oh, right? Okay. So if we see the fish is maybe slightly to one side or not mm. normal, then we know there's a problem. And, so, then, and then we can yeah. remove and we treat for different diseases. Or... So if they just like chill like this, this that is fine. Is, that is okay this is for normal. Them. Yeah, yes, this, is this is what they do in the wild, right? Mm -hmm. We don't see it in the wild because the water's not clear. <laughs> but oh. we know this is how the fish naturally sit in the water system and how they swim. So in the wild, they, they don't go very fast all the time, sir. They yeah, just go some, slow like this normally. Yeah, some species yeah. move more than others. So mm -hmm. these big, big giant Mekong catfish, generally, they, they will travel long distances, but slowly. Mm -hmm. right? Slowly. Not, not too, too fast. So yes, these, like what you see now is, is quite normal. The smaller fish seem to te uh, tend mm -hmm. to move more. So the silver uh, tin foil barbs, uh, they, they move a lot more. Yes, sir. But in the wild, we have like the flow of the river. Mm -hmm. And fish normally, they flow against the, the current. Yeah. Do you have the same current? We have the same in here. So when the water yeah. comes back from the systems, we, yeah. we can't see it. Yeah. But when you're inside the water, you, you, you can feel, feel it. Oh, yeah, the you current. Have the same okay. like the river, yeah. yeah. It, it's not still. This water in here is not still. You look it, but it, it's always moving. 
So if the water does not move, it will affect the behavior of the animal? Yeah, and, and also if the water doesn't move, again, it's not being oxygenated. Oh, okay, it's very okay. bad for them. Yeah. And also it's not being cleaned, right? We need mm. the water to move to clean into the system. If mm. that doesn't happen, we get buildup of bacteria, ammonia, and all these things that are harmful to the fish. So uh, normally the, the, you know, the water that comes from the filtration system mm -hmm. will move the, the water naturally. Yeah, so all the water I mean, that's taken out yeah. to be cleaned in the system then comes back in. And that movement is the same like a river flow. So you don't need like a separate system to push the water? No, the no, pumps, no. The pumps the pump do, do, do the same. We, we have large pumps on this system, three um, 11 kilowatt big pumps mm -hmm. that draw the water out for cleaning, but also put back. And yes. that, that movement is similar to a river flow. Or, Yes, sir. But you know, how about if the fish gets pregnant? Let's say, how do you deal with it? And and where do they reproduce? Sorry, where do they lay their eggs? Let's say, sir. Okay, so uh, depending okay. what species. So um, example, they're, 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 big ones. they're all slightly different. So the problem with the big ones, although critically endangered, mm -hmm. so we would love to breed the species. Mm -hmm. They're probably not able to breed in in a tank like this. Oh. And the reason for that is uh, these are what we call migratory breeders. So they don't, they live in Cambodia, but they don't breed here. Mm -hmm. They travel um, upstream. North, yeah. north Mekong into China and breed upstream. The problem we have now, which we try to teach people about, we have mm -hmm. a lot of dams along the Mekong River now. Mm -hmm. So the fish can't, those migratory species can't go back to their breeding grounds. And this, this is an issue we're, we're facing. So we think this is why the reason this one's critically endangered is because the most dams. cannot get back to the, the, their breeding grounds anymore. Yeah. So it makes captivity breeding this one very difficult. Right? But, but, but there, there has been attempt before to breed them in captivity. But this species, oh, people keep a long, a long time uh, trying to breed. But um, yeah, I, I think it's pretty difficult to match those uh, you know, migrate through roots to, to get to breathe inside an aquarium. Mm -hmm. um, other ones, we know we can breathe and uh, yes, we, we, we work. So, but in here, we, we won't really do breeding in this tank. Mm -hmm. If we want to breed something, we will separate, mm -hmm. keep a pair and just them. So let's say if, if uh, one of these species had babies in here, mm -hmm. the babies probably get eaten by the other fish. Mm -hmm. So we would I separate see. for specific breeding. Yes. Not, not in this tank, yeah. And mostly off display. Yeah, well, we set up behind the scenes to do it. Yes, sir. And about, again, sir, about the design of the tank, let's say. So the tank are designed especially for aesthetic reason or is there like a practical, you know, reason behind it? Like, for example, how thick is the glass or, you know? Ma yeah. Uh, yeah, many different reasons, but, yeah. but all of those. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, functionality, safety is, is important. So mm -hmm. we, we, we know this acrylic is mm -hmm. strong enough to take this pressure of water, right? Mm -hmm. We can't have it breaking <laughs> yeah, and the yeah, water yeah. coming out. So yes, structurally is um, engineered to be, to be strong and, uh, and to be able to, to cope. To withstand the pressure. Yeah. Aesthetically also, we want it to look nice. We want people to come and see and they enjoy what they're looking at, not blank. So we have, you know, this, this being the Mekong species is, is um, themed like the temples, you know, Cambodian. This is yes. very Cambodian. Yes. And we want that because we want people to know that these animals are from Cambodia. Mm -hmm. So aesthetically pleasing, but also then we need it to be practical for the aquarists to look after. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the, the substrate, mm -hmm. we don't have this deep. Yeah, yeah, so the substrate is very, very thin. Thin, Yeah. so we don't get that buildup of bacteria. It mm -hmm. makes it easier to clean for, for not, just, uh, not just for the health of the fish, mm -hmm. but also for the, for the um, aquarists to, to look after. So a lot of the enclosure design, not just the fish tank, also outside for in the bears, the, the, the tiger, the reptiles, mm -hmm. we design uh, mostly so it's good for the, the animals that are living inside it, of course, mm -hmm. also for keep us to maintain and clean is yes. very important that it, that's uh, made as easy as possible for them. So yes. we can do it better. Mm. And also the last question, so, so if the fish got sick, mm -hmm. what are the ways that you, uh, you know, you treat them? Like you vaccine them? Vaccinate them? Not, or no? not vaccinate fish, no. But uh, it depends what the sickness is. But often mm. we, we, we can tell from the behavior what the sickness is. Yes, sir. Um, so maybe it's bacterial, then it go on antibiotics like we, mm. like we take. Like, right? like in the food, you put them in yeah. the food. Yeah. In the food, or we can even inject directly, depending on which through, type. Through the needle. Can yeah. do, yeah. Oh, okay. We, we, 
try not to do that because it's more mm -hmm. stressful for the fish. Mm -hmm. If we can hide it in the food, a lot easier. <laughs> they don't even know to take the medicine. Right? Yeah. Um, but that's bacterial. We have fungal fungal issues. Fungal. Yeah, so maybe they get a little fungal infection. Mm -hmm. And then again, we remove from here, we keep in different water. Water that is okay for the fish, but doesn't suit the fungus. So the fungus <laughs> die away. So there's lots of different treatments we can do. Um, uh, parasitic treatments also yes, a lot. Sir make sure they don't have any skin parasites or worms inside. But the best treatment is to make the tank as clean as possible. Clean as possible. Prevention is better than treatment. Prevent yeah. So we have quarantine systems in the back mm -hmm. of the house. So all of these fish, when they come here, they go quarantine yeah. first. And this is where they get treatment for um, infection mm -hmm. and parasites. Mm -hmm. So before they go into the big system, they've already been through prevention because mm -hmm. exactly, Treating fish in half a million liters of water like this is difficult. This is half a million half liters. A million liters which means it is half a million tons. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Maybe less than that. I'm sorry. We need to like uh, yeah, buy, so it, buy, 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 buy a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is generally uh, around 500,000 liters of water in here, oh, half a million. Wow. The marine one is around 600,000, a little bit more. Mm. So when we treat fish mm -hmm. with a lot of medicine, we dose the water. Right? It's about the water mm. volume, not the fish. Wow. So we don't want to treat this tank because that's a, it's, that it's more difficult. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what we will do before they come in here, they go into a small closed system, mm -hmm. which we can dose the water uh, a lot more accurately and just for that animal. So by the time they come into here, they should have no... No disease. Infection, no, no, no parasite, nothing. So they keep this tank a lot healthier. <laughs> yeah. So normally, um, let's say, Every individual fish are tagged. They know that you know their number. You know, I mean, you keep a record of each individual. We have individual. microchips. Oh, microchips. Microchips, yes. So, yeah. um, not not. I mean, not all the fish. The small yeah, yeah. ones we don't do because the microchips quite big, and we don't mm -hmm. want to put inside the small fish. You know? And it, it, we don't need to. But yes, the big ones we know individually. We know who they are. Mm -hmm. The divers uh, give them names. They they know each one individually. Yes, um, and like the wildlife outside. Mm -hmm. um, the tigers have microchip. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know who they are anyway, but they yeah, have yeah. microchip. Um, our crocodiles all have individual chips, so we know exactly who is who. Mm -hmm. 60 crocodile, but we know who is who individual. Yes, sir. Um, so yeah, so more important for the animals that we can't tell apart. So mm -hmm. out of my 60 crocodiles, I don't know them all individual, right? So, but, but we have the microchip, so we can always tell yes, sure, um, who is who. So you have a plan to like release them back into the wild and can they possibly yeah. live in the wild? If yeah, sure. Them? Yeah. So uh, we already release, uh, so we have a crocodile project mm -hmm. in Siem, uh, Siem Pang, yes. in Sung Chang province. So we re over the last two years, we released 61 animal into mm -hmm. um, Siem Pang Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, so we work there with Rising Phoenix who manage mm -hmm. that area. Yes, sir. Um, and they, uh, you know, they, they, they manage that area, make sure nobody's catching the crocodiles and, and this sort of thing. Um, and, and they're living, in fact, this year, we had our first successful nest in the wild from our introduced animal. So this is all good science. So yes, we can, we can release back to the wild and we plan to do that with as many species as, we, as possible, especially the endangered ones. So as many that we can breed here, then eventually they'll, they'll return to the wild. But what we need to do is also work on the areas to release them to. You know, we need to make it safe. Yes, sir. So Siem Pang is managed by Rising Phoenix. They work with the local communities. They don't hunt crocodile. They don't use certain nets for fishing that kill mm -hmm. crocodile. So that, therefore, we need to remove the threats of why they're not there anymore or why they're so endangered, right? Yes, sir. And the same with the fish. Uh, for fish, it's is difficult because mm -hmm. uh, Cambodia relies on fishing a, a, a lot. Yes, sir. Um, so, you know, if we use things like the, the, the gill nets that stretch all the way across mm -hmm. down like that, uh, you know, the, we, we kill a, a, a lot of fish, which we need to do. Cambodia is very reliant on fish mm -hmm. to feed people. Exactly. But the very endangered ones, maybe they, maybe they don't do so good like that. So mm -hmm. uh, fishing practices is very important. Yes, very sir. important that people follow fishing guidelines and not to use the illegal nets, um, um, poison, dynamite, mm -hmm. all these old uh, electric fishing, yeah, yeah. all these old techniques. Uh, this is why these guys are quite dangerous. So, so the main, uh, you know, the main, let's say, the main fish here, yep. you only put them here because they are about to be endangered or they are critically endangered? Well, they, uh, I mean, we, we show yeah. some species which yeah. aren't endangered, like yeah. the gourami, this one you see in the it's market. Also common, oh, yeah. 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 But, but we still put them because we want to teach people about mm -hmm. the different types of fish in Cambodia. Yeah, yeah. 
But yes, we concentrate on the, the most endangered the ones, most endangered because they, they need the most help. What we mainly do here is um, we give the chance for people to see the species we want to protect. Mm. So if, if you come here and you see these species, now you can admire yes, sir. and you want to protect them. Mm. It's a lot easier when people can see them. You know, it's not like going watching the TV or, or, or mm -hmm. you know, reading a book. It's just if like you a come here and place, see them, yeah. and then we can, you know, we have a lot of school children come through. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is to inspire people to care about the wildlife of Cambodia and, mm -hmm. and how to protect them. And you look at them and then they look at you. Yeah. <laughs> across yeah, the, yeah, across the class. More yeah. personal, yeah. Mm -hmm.